Welcome in. Steve Palazzolo here with Mike Renner discussing the NFL draft. And now that the regular season is over, let's go back, Mike, and discuss some of the names that absolutely broke out. They put themselves on the map, especially when it comes to first round consideration. Not saying all these guys need to be drafted in the first round, but we had our preseason draft boards, and then these guys come in and change everything. So I don't think anybody made as big of an impact this year as Quinn and Williams, interior defensive lineman from Alabama, all of a sudden in our world. Top five potential selection? He's easily top five. And to go from 151 snaps a season to go in, and he only played 151 snaps, not because of injury, but because they had you know, more talented guys Just they fought in front of them at Alabama. Probably not more talented now, though. 95.9 overall grade this season, highest of any player in the country. He has been utterly dominant. Nine sacks, 15 hits, 19 hurries. I'd take him as the second best defensive player in this draft class after Nick Bosa. And really, uh, top five, top three, wherever you want to take him, I'd be happy with. Quinnen Williams, probably the biggest jump of any player in the country. I'm going to skip around a little bit here, so stay okay. with me. Josh Allen from Kentucky, another guy who uh, almost came out of school last year, almost went to the NFL draft, but I think when you look at his decision to come back, mm. put on some weight, yes. improve as a pass rusher, and I just love the versatility and some of the plays that he made in coverage this year. Yeah, you can always kind of see the traits being there, but he was undersized, and undersized pass rushers when you're coming out in the draft, people are just wary of that. People are wary of skinnier pass rushers because a lot of them have not panned out. Of late in the NFL, you have to have something behind you. He added 25 pounds over the course of the offseason and looks like a completely different player because of it. Highest edge, grade, edge defender grade of anyone in the nation this year, 91.8. He doesn't rush the passer all the time, so when he does, though, he's been one of the most effective in the country. That's the biggest difference from him this year to him a season ago. You always saw him being pretty active in coverage. He could play off-ball linebacker. Now people can actually think he can rush the passer and stay on the edge. Yeah, I think when you see guys like TJ Watt, who have dropped into coverage over 100 times this year mm -hmm. for the Steelers, Whitney Merciless doing the same thing for the Texans, Josh Allen could fit that type of role yes. perfectly. Rush the passer and drop into coverage. Uh, another interior defensive lineman is Gerald Willis the third from Miami. And what a long Yes. college career he's had some off-field issues started at florida way back in the day but this year at miami a breakout season with him just disrupting on the interior yeah way back in the day is not an understatement there he played 131 snaps back in 2014 way back when then up 237 snaps in 2016 none in the years in between that now this year 619 snaps for miami he was dominant at the beginning of the year slowed down of late but i mean he's an old man at this point he's probably <laughs> you know showing some signs of aging but uh, he's played his way into a probably not a day one draft pick but maybe somewhere on the long lines of day two he's just been a disruptive force on that hurricanes front now, I let you put some of the guys on this list together, and when I see wide receiver Hakeem Butler from Iowa State as a breakout player, I just say, no, no, no. This was We have this whole document mm -hmm. where we put our guys aside. He, this is my guy coming into the season, Hakeem Butler. He flashed his potential, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, yes. and moves really well for his size. That's what really stood out to me on tape and why I you know, was eyeballing him as a breakout player. But this year, he had the production to back it up. Yeah, the production had some ridiculous catches there for Iowa State. Had a ton of big plays, averaged 22.1 yards per catch, 1,126 yards on the season when he had only 831 in his career before this in the two years prior. 11 drops is concerning. There are, he's not a perfect prospect by any means, but definitely played his way up some boards. Those big 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, six guys, they have to move pretty well you mm -hmm. know, to, to translate to the next level. I like what Butler has in that department. Uh, let's go to cornerback. A couple guys that stood out. Byron Murphy from Washington. Uh, he had really good play in small sample yes. sizes, and a lot of the uh, Washington secondary uh, had that coming into the season, but Murphy put the whole year together and became a PFF All-American. Yeah, only 334 snaps a season ago, but played, like I said, extremely well. 86.6 .6 grade on those snaps. So we're the guy who we sort of said, when he comes and plays full-time, we're expecting this sort of next jump from him. I'm not sure we expected this, though. Highest overall grade of any cornerback in the NCAA, 91.9, only a 47.1 passer rating when targeted, 47.2 catch rate, it's below 50%. It's a pretty darn good number. Yeah, and he made a ton of plays on the ball. And then at LSU, the top-graded cornerback in the LSU secondary was Christian Fulton, not yes. Greedy Williams. And we still love Greedy Williams as a prospect, and he has all the tools. But as far as pure production goes this year, Christian Fulton had the best grade and was the best PFF player in that secondary. Yeah, pretty ridiculous when you think about it with Greedy, who's probably going to go in the top five or top ten. He was going to go very high in the upcoming draft. Fulton, like I said, outgraded him, only played 13 snaps as a freshman back in 2016, was suspended, supposed to be for two years after cheating on a drug test that year. Got that suspension, reduced this offseason, came in for LSU and played lights out football. He played his way to, I believe, a first round draft pick. If he does come out, may not, may come back for another year, but 
Only three catches he allowed this season, 20 yards or more, only 17 total catches on the season. So, three lights out football. You did have him in the first round in your mock, right? I did. We're at that Kansas City Chiefs. Everyone. There it is. It's on the YouTube channel. Go check out Mike's first mock draft of the season. Uh, and then let's go to quarterback, Dwayne Haskins of Ohio State. Again, I don't know if this was a big surprise. If you saw him last year against Michigan, you could see uh, you know, some of the potential. Mm -hmm. The spring game showed it a little bit too. But immediately you could see Ohio State's never had a polished pocket passer quite like Haskins. Yeah, it was really interesting because they've always been a very much run-heavy offense. You know, Think back to Ezekiel Elliott when they won the national championship. They ride their run game, and it was – the complete opposite this year. The run game really suffered, but Haskins was throwing the ball all around the yard. He has all the tools, can throw it every single level of the defense, can for an arm. The concern with him is such a limited sample size that we see now. Only one season of starting right now. It was about you know as good as you can do in one season of starting, but he had the one game against uh, Penn State, just really ugly there down the stretch in that when he ended up coming away with the win, but some, some sort of issues under pressure that he's gonna have to prove to NFL evaluators that uh, I'm not sure he's going to be able to not play. Yeah, he won't be. Yeah. And the, uh, the under pressure numbers were a little bit concerning. Yes. At Penn State, as you mentioned, at Purdue, some of the road games just yes. wasn't, they weren't as clean, though we dominated at home mm -hmm. for the Buckeyes. And then finally, do we have to mention Kyler Murray? Gotta mention Kyler Murray. Do you want me to give you the baseball scouting report on him? Just uh, yeah, you know, you cannon get, for an arm. You give the baseball scouting report. He ran first round, $5 million signing bonus. So what's the. He got drafted one more time than I did in three <laughs> attempts. So he's really good out there playing the outfield for the Oakland A's. His agent claims he's going to play baseball. However, man, was he good at college football. This he year. wouldn't have come back to Oklahoma if he really loved playing football. He wouldn't have risked you know, losing that signing bonus in baseball if he didn't love it. And so a lot of talk about if he loves, base, you know, if he loves football more than baseball, he might be, end up being a first rounder. And he played about as good as you can in a one, you know, one season sample size. Obviously won the Heisman, highest graded quarterback in our system can make plays outside the pocket, can run like no quarterback we've seen in you know, college football this year that has any you know, sort of chance of getting drafted. I don't know. Is this the time I, for I, Kyler Murray to I go to the NFL? If you love football more than you love baseball, he's probably going to be a first or second rounder if he does go, so we'll see. Man, so we were looking at him. He'd be a tough, a tough evaluation because grading-wise, he was right up there with Baker Mayfield, but Baker was being docked for his height, and he towers over Kyler Murray, yeah, Murray so that would be a huge issue. Very short, yes. Uh, we could still see him maybe as a day-two type of quarterback. I, could, I mean, I definitely, I could even see him as a day one type of quarterback. Wow. I haven't gotten the full eval, but that's a offensive line at Oklahoma where you're not going to get taller guys in the NFL. That's yeah, a, he's still, you know, throwing, he's over still throwing over a big O line uh, and still making a ton of plays. And you can still put him in a, the run heavy stuff is getting more in vogue. A lot of coaches are willing to use that, so we'll see. We'll keep a close eye on Kyla Murray and see if that decision making changes at all during this entire process. It happens every single year. We have some breakout players that come out of nowhere, and all of a sudden they're in the first round mix, and that's our list per PFF and our play-by-play -play grading from the 2018 season.